Exploring National Geographic. An individual documentary created for National History Day by Megan Friend. The National Geographic Society was founded by an elite group of geniuses in 1888 in the interest of them increasing their knowledge of the world. This club of 33 members would eventually expand their love of travel into a non-profit organization, a world-famous magazine, and other media platforms that illustrate a legacy of international exploration and bring people worldwide the experience of encounter with new cultures. However, this would not come easily. Within their first decade, the group would struggle with the loss of founding members, both to death and to controversial disputes, a major change in leadership, and decisions that altered the mission of the society forever. Yet through these tough years and from humble beginnings, the National Geographic Society would grow into a message neatly held within a glossy yellow rectangle that would touch every corner of the earth and encourage all who saw it to do the same. The National Geographic Society was created by six founding members with Gardner Hubbard the father figure of the operation. Hubbard was a founder and president of what later became AT&T along with being the father-in-law and colleague of Alexander Graham Bell. A.W. Greeley was a famous polar explorer while J.R. Bartlett was a historian and linguist. Henry Mitchell was an oceanographer whereas Henry Gannett was a geographer and trailblazer in topographical mapping methods. Lastly, A. H. Thompson was a veteran topographer, geographer, and explorer. The society was set into motion after sending a few invitations to carefully chosen individuals. They discussed organizing a society for the increase and diffusion of geographical knowledge. The society officially came into being on January 27, 1888, when the men signed a contract and elected Gardner Hubbard as their first president. During his acceptance speech, he said he was neither a scientific man nor a geographer, and by my election, you notify the public that the membership of our society will not be confined to professional geographers, but will include that large number who, like myself, desire to promote special researches by others and to diffuse the knowledge so gained among men that we may all know more of the world upon which we live. This positive opinion of sending the public the message that the society was all-inclusive, however, was not reciprocated throughout the entire group, which had by this time already grown to 165 members. As seen in the first edition of the magazine, many held that the publication should be printed specifically for a small, professional, and educated audience. A strictly scientific journal, in a plain, dark brown cover, that held no photographs within. In 1889, the magazine would publish its first pictures, simple pastel scenes from Nicaragua and a four-color fold-out map. This increased the divide within the society over whether the magazine should be a privilege of the elite or they should share their wealth of knowledge and expand their audience. Hubbard died during his term as National Geographic Society president on December 11, 1897. In response, an election was held once again and Alexander Graham Bell became the society's second president. It was during this transition that the difference in opinions would reach its peak, with Bell being an avid supporter of writing for a wider audience. Under his lead, the National Geographic Society began experimenting with a bolder, brighter style, and in 1906, it had its first publication of wildlife photos, titled Hunting Wild Game with Flashlight and Camera. The publication was met with awe, excitement, and praise, with editor Gil Grosenberg calling it one of the pioneering achievements of the National Geographic. It was an extraordinarily educative series. Nobody had ever seen pictures like that of wild animals. National Geographic's new appreciation of photography ensured an enormous and continuously growing audience. It was on its way to becoming a national symbol of exploration and discovery. World War I marked a turning point that would send the magazine's following to soaring heights. During this time, the issues began to feature maps that highlighted the developments of the war and it became a national source for information and understanding of the troops and their path to foreign lands. In 1926, the society's membership passed 1 million and they launched photographic expeditions all over the world. Over time, photographs would not only come to be some of the most prominent portions of the publications, but they gave a new meaning and value to the American readers of universal cultures and geography. The magazine was a pioneer in photographic exploration in America, making the first color photo lab in 1920 
and using underwater photography for the first time in 1927. They once again published maps and military photographs from World War II, keeping not just the American public informed, but the American soldiers as well. In 1941, National Geographic opened its storehouse of photos to FDR and his men to help aid the war effort. The Society was the first to print an issue in complete color in 1962 and the first to print a hologram in 1984. In the interest of exploration, the Society did not strictly contribute by publishing photos. As its popularity increased, the Society began to fund hundreds of journeys to foreign lands while documenting the travelers' encounters with nature, wildlife, and international culture. To this day, the Society has given over 9,000 grants for exploration and research. Some of the most famous and widely covered have been Robert Peary's expedition as the first person to reach the North Pole, Lewis and Mary Leakey's monumental research in Africa on the history of human evolution, Jane Goodall's groundbreaking studies of gorillas and chimpanzees, and Hiram Bingham's discovery and excavation of Machu Picchu. Even now, the Society offers anybody the chance to sign up for an international trip or expedition on their website. Above all, the Society remains one of the largest nonprofit organizations in the world. We believe in the power of science, exploration, education, and storytelling to change the world. The Society has made milestones in protecting the Earth. They build hundreds of habitats to protect rare big cats from going extinct and protected over hundreds of thousand miles of critical ocean habitat. They currently have a future food initiative to feed the world. From beginning as a club of 33 people, the society has grown into an international phenomenon in a magazine with global circulation of 6.8 million per month. From its multiple media platforms, the society reaches over 700 million people per month. No matter the amount of members it's had, however, the society has always stuck to its mission. From pioneering the use of wildlife photos to funding expeditions that would go down in history, to bringing the American people first-hand coverage of the world wars, the first moon landing, and other worldwide affairs, the Society has been an immeasurable influence in encouraging exploration and curiosity. They don't only physically bring people to exotic locations with expeditions, but they provide millions of people with their own explorations just by flipping the yellow rectangle outline of the cover over and taking a peek inside the magazine's pages. Rather than operating to make a profit, the Society truly works to foster the love of the natural world in all present and future generations. They have united inhabitants of countries all over the globe, inspiring an admiration for encounter with new cultures and customs. In less than two centuries, the Society has built itself an incomparable legacy, one which will continue to nurture the exchange of culture, encounter of new people and creatures, and exploration across the planet for years to come.